This incident uh, sort of predated the reality TV craze. Didn't it predated it? Didn't exactly predate it. The reality craze had been going on for a couple of years. But by predated, I mean it predated the peak. It was, a, it was that a uh, long-haired fellow, right? And uh, the, uh, the the bartender. I remember because I was trying to, you know, get me a seven and seven, but I couldn't find her. Where was she? I could see where somebody who's not uh, experienced in show business would find this incident to be really unsettling. I'm out of my, I'm out of my mind. We were uh, doing the normal variety hour. At that, at that time, the, uh, the variety hour was, was an open mic show. The show seemed to be going very well from my perspective. I was sitting down. I had the camera on. It was going very well. We had a few good acts, including... Uh, a guitar player named Touching You, who sang very short songs. Leave me alone, I'm high on drugs. Leave me alone, I'm high on drugs. The show was starting to wind down, and we were, we were pretty much out of talent. And the bartender uh, asked me if she, could, if she could perform, and I said, uh, sure, go ahead and, and get up there. I didn't know what she was going to do. I didn't even know that she was a performer. This is a story about this, or maybe it's a warning. Anyway, I had this, uh, a few years back, I had this really psycho-ass roommate. She began to tell a story about a, about a psycho roommate. Uh, I don't know, there, there was uh, some sort of a fight, some previous, I don't, I don't recall the details exactly. I asked my roommate for a week to find this cat at home. That's all. No one was allergic, no one gave a shit, except for the one dude. Then one day, I'm home, and I'm in the kitchen, right? And uh, he comes out with a video camera. This is how psycho he is. Camera, video camera, and he's like, you fucking bitch, you fucking cunt! I'm being raped in my own house! I'm being fucking raped in my own house! So my friend, finally, she wakes up, she comes down the stairs, and she's like, dude, just, re she's like groggy, and she's like, dude, just relax, it's just a cat. She started to lose the audience a little bit. You know, you know it, it, it kind of dragged on for a while, and you're sitting there going, I don't want to hear this bartender tell a story. As her story went on, uh, it became clear that uh, she was talking about someone who was right there in the room. He goes and he swings at her. He, he swings at her. And line. then... And as it turned out, that person was Touching You, who had performed earlier in the show. Touching You comes in, bam, raises the stakes. It's a, to it's a totally different ballgame. You don't want to take that back to the green room. You want to put it in the limelight. Because uh, there's no such thing as too much controversy. In fact, there's no such thing as bad press. They say that all the time. And it's actually here in my book, in chapter 21, which I entitled, Bad Press, Schmad Press. It's all good, baby. That's the whole title. After a few minutes of him responding from off stage, he got onto the stage and sat there, sort of in a semi-threatening way. The dynamic becomes, you know, you get that, you know, promise of potential violence, potential for violence, and you get a potential for some physical confrontation. That's when I went up and uh, handed him the mic because I saw an opportunity there. All right, let's tell them the truth. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, I love, I have no problem He's a when fucking people psychopath. Tell. So the next thing you know, you know, the two of them are screaming at each other on, on mic, on stage. The energy in the audience just ratcheted up a whole, maybe two notches as soon as he made his entrance. Well, when he looked into the camera, that's when I realized perhaps I should be scared. Really, you got to roll the punches. You never know what's going to come your way. It reminds me, actually, of uh, working with Charlotte Ray. We had a wonderful, wonderful ship cruise uh, on the Cunard line. She likes to mix it up and throw stuff in some of the time. So one night, she starts in with some Shakespearean stuff, and I have to respond. So I just start making it up. I'm just like, prithee, my lady, uh, more sack. 
you know, something like that, or uh, uh, may we cocoon in your pantaloons, and and they were laughing. Oh my God. The show is pretty much over at that part, at that point, because when you, when you have a classic moment like that, what more needs to be said? Almost as soon as it was over, um, I I, uh, I quickly drafted uh, a uh, legal legal releases to the footage uh, on a bar napkin, and uh, I couldn't get either of them to sign the releases, but I'm pretty sure that neither of them uh, knows where we are. Roll with the punches is basically rule number one of showbiz. Or actually maybe it's rule number two. Three, I think it's rule number three. Rule number one is be on time. Rule number three is roll with the punches because you never know what's gonna happen. You never know when violence is gonna break out and uh, Paco is way behind on his liability premiums. So that's always a concern. The fact of the matter is is that uh, I saw an opportunity there to create a little controversy on stage, and and I went for it. You know, it's uh, it's unfortunate sometimes that this is what people really like to see. You can't write. I mean, you can't you can't even create this kind of drama. It was really a it's kind of a landmark for the show. It happened. It was unsettling. It was such great theater. It really was. And uh, you know, we realized that we were really on something special after that night.